In February of this year, 2022, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, a woman named Taylor Shipp Business strangled to death a man named Shad Therian with a chain while the two were having sex. Taylor Shipp Business is charged with homicide, mutilating a corpse and sexual assault in the February death and dismemberment of 25-year-old Shad Therian. And the Brown County judge questioned if she was even aware of what was happening. That prompted him to order a competency exam, telling them she had discovered her son's severed head in a bucket at the bottom of the basement stairs. I was going to say she killed Therian during a sexual encounter and mutilated his body. Police were able to locate her soon after and interviewed her about what had taken place between her and the victim. The following narrative is based on her statement to police and on publicly available reporting regarding what led up to and what followed the gruesome murder of Shad Therian and the mutilation of his remains. Taylor Shabiznis was born Taylor Denise Coronado and had her name legally changed in the year 2018. At the time that she was arrested for the murder of Shad Therian, she was apparently married to a man who was locked away in a Wisconsin jail. His Facebook page shows his name as Warren Shabiznis and says that he and Taylor have been together since the year 2017. On the page, he writes adoringly of the young woman and makes reference to their quote unquote Shabiznis empire. He signs the bio, King Poppy Boo Shabiznis. Taylor has a young child who was born in 2021, according to her Facebook page, where images of the infant appear in numerous posts. Taylor apparently did not have custody of the child at the time of her alleged crimes. Also on the page are posts where she promotes the business endeavor she had undertaken at some point, making and selling jewelry. Hi, I'm Taylor Shaw Business, and I'm a very hardworking, dedicated individual that's broke and really needs money to help get that swole on. So if you could please donate to this GoFundMe page, it'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. One cryptic post that Taylor wrote on January 13th of this year reads, quote, I got hitched to show them my commitment, loyalty, and dedication to them that I was never gonna be how I used to be. Then they turn around and fuck on me. There's no way I'll ever go into another relationship. Hashtag can't trust no one. In what appears to be her last Facebook post, also on January 13th, she wrote a message which is rather ominous in hindsight. She says she went off on a drug addict and told the individual that quote, I'll never stop buying you dope so I could sit back and watch you die. Another post, which in retrospect, seems quite foreboding. Taylor shares a video which shows a mixed gendered jujitsu training session in which a woman is grappling with a man and appears to choke him until he loses consciousness. After Taylor's arrest, Facebook friends of hers expressed disappointment and horror over her alleged crimes and referenced her struggles to stay off drugs. In those posts, friends make reference to close bonds they shared with Taylor and say that she suddenly became distant and unreachable in the month before the incident. One friend says she suspected that Taylor had commenced a drug binge during that time. Taylor had had previous troubles with the law. In 2020, she incurred in at least two separate incidents, charges of resisting or obstructing an officer, battery or threat to a law enforcement officer, which is a felony, misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia, bail jumping, and felony fleeing from an officer. She was sentenced to 60 days in jail and three years probation in one of the cases and two years probation in the other. She was still on probation at the time of Shad Therian's murder. According to Shad's obituary, he enjoyed camping, games, and spending time with his family and was a very kind and compassionate person who often thought of others before himself. He was a talented artist and enjoyed wood carving. His love of music is apparent on his Facebook page. Many of his posts link to music videos. It is unclear how Taylor Shipp Business and Shad Therian came to know one another or for how long they had been acquainted. Records show that they were both students in the Howard Swamico K-12 school district, which consists of five elementary schools, one intermediate school, a middle school, and a single high school, Bayport High. Neither Taylor nor Shad is listed as having graduated from Bayport. On Monday, February 21st, according to the statement that Taylor gave to police after the discovery of her grisly crimes, 
She and a friend picked up Shad from his mother's house on Stony Brook Road on that evening, then drove somewhere and bought drugs. Then they went to Taylor's apartment on Eastman Road. They all smoked weed. Taylor and Shad smoked methamphetamine. After a while, Taylor's friend dipped. Subsequently, Taylor shot up some trazodone, an antidepressant, and shot up Shad as well. The two ended up getting back into the minivan and driving back to Shad's mother's house. Shad's mom's boyfriend was there and opened the door for them. Shad and Taylor went into the basement. About five minutes later, Shad brought out two chains that Taylor would later describe as silver, chain link, and like a dog's choke collar. The chains were for the intended use of autoerotic asphyxiation, that is strangulation during the act of copulation. They began having sex, and Taylor, sitting on top of Shad, began choking him with one of the chains. She just went crazy, she said to police later. Shad was face down, and Taylor pulled at the end of the chain. Shad tried to fight her. Taylor said that when she felt Shad's heart beating, she just kept choking him harder. She said that Shad wouldn't die because he, quote, kept rebuilding into muscle, unquote. She said she passed out at some point as she strangled Shad. When she came to, Shad's face had turned purple. She proceeded to continue choking him. Blood began coming out of the man's mouth at some point. That and his discolored face let Taylor know that he was dead then, but she continued choking him. It took three to five minutes for Shad Therian to die, according to Taylor's estimate. Then, as the young man lay lifeless, Taylor began to, quote, play with his body. She performed oral sex on the motionless man. She put a phallus in his mouth and then proceeded to sodomize him with it. She molested Shad's corpse for the next two or three hours. She spent all of Tuesday in the basement with Shad's body into Tuesday evening, and at some point she went up to the kitchen, grabbed some knives, and brought them down to the basement. Then she began to decapitate and dismember Shad's corpse. As Shad lay on the bed in the basement, she pulled him to the edge and placed a black bucket underneath his head. She proceeded to cut off the man's head. She continued. She severed his limbs and took organs from his body, including his penis. She used a bucket and a storage tote to catch the blood as she dissected Shad and used the shower in the basement to dump the receptacles. Taylor put Shad's head and his penis in the bucket and covered it with a blanket. She placed the various body parts into bags she found in the basement and placed Shad's dismembered torso in the tote. In the wee hours of Wednesday morning, Taylor began carrying some of Shad's body parts to the minivan outside the home. Then she drove away and returned to her apartment on Eastman Road. She left behind several of the limbs she'd taken from her dead lover. Shad's 47-year-old mother, Tara, heard a door slam sometime between 2.30 and 3 that morning. She heard a vehicle start up outside and assumed it was Taylor. Tara got out of bed and noticed the light on in the basement. She went down and no one was there. As she turned to go back upstairs, she noticed, noticed a black a bucket, bucket sitting next inside. to the bottom of the stairs. That's where she found her son's head inside. She contacted authorities. When an officer responded, Tara told him that Taylor had come and picked up Shad Monday night and she never saw him alive again. Tara and her boyfriend were out of the house during the day on Tuesday. She believed that Shad and Taylor were in the basement during that day. She didn't go into the basement on Tuesday but did at one point hear Taylor down there talking. The officer went down into the basement and discovered the bucket that contained Shad's head and also noticed a mattress which was soiled with dry blood. Meanwhile, Police had been dispatched to the Eastman Avenue apartment, acting on information which indicated that a woman named Taylor D. Shabusiness, who had last been seen with Therian, was living at the residence. An officer had a date of birth and a recent photo of Taylor. The minivan was close by and officers began inspecting it. Just then, one cop saw Taylor emerge from the apartment building. She saw the officers and froze. She had dry blood on the front of her black sweatshirt and sweatpants. When asked if she knew why the police were there, she said something to the effect of, because of my warrant for my arrest. Police brought Taylor to the station. There, officers noticed scratches and cuts on the young woman's hands and arms. Taylor said they were self-inflicted. 
Her hands were smeared with blood. A detective advised her of her rights and proceeded to converse with her. When they told her that a human head had been found in a home in Green Bay, Taylor responded, quote, that's pretty fucked up. Taylor was unfiltered while discussing the events of the previous two days. A detective asked, where was the rest of Shad's body? Taylor told them that his remains could be found in the basement. When asked what the hell happened, she responded, that is a good question, claiming she had blacked out. Taylor told the cops that she and Shad had been smoking the bitch, which she clarified as a colloquialism for methamphetamine. She said that the strangulation had started as a part of sex that night and that they had had that kind of sex before. At one point, Taylor said the words, quote, damn the head. I can't believe I left the head though. Taylor told the officers that they were going to have fun trying to find all the organs. She said that all of the body parts should be in the basement, save for a foot or a leg, which she left in the minivan. She explained to detectives that she'd left the head in a black bucket in the basement and that the bread knife she used during the disarticulation of Shad's body worked best for the task because of its serrated edge. She also commented that she enjoyed choking Shad and that even after he began to cough up blood, she kept on choking him while watching his face because she wanted to see what would happen. As Shad struggled for breath, Taylor said she thought to herself she was, quote, already this far, so she just kept on. At one point, Taylor said to the cops in a low tone of voice, quote, yeah, I liked it. She told the detectives that her plan was to bring all of the body parts with her, but she got lazy and paranoid because of the dope and only ended up putting a leg or a foot in the van. During the interview, Taylor asked the investigators if they knew what it was like to love something so much that you kill it. Taylor Shabiznis is charged with first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third degree sexual assault. She's also charged with two felony counts of probation violation. On March 10th, her attorney filed a motion requesting a competency hearing. At a hearing on April 13th, a judge announced that Taylor was deemed competent to stand trial following a court-ordered psychological examination. The announcement took her attorney by surprise. He pointed out to the court that his client had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and had been receiving mental health treatment since she was in the seventh grade. The lawyer also made clear his intention to seek a second evaluation. The judge in the case said that the state's psychologist was an experienced and respected doctor that had conducted numerous assessments for the court. However, the judge ultimately granted the defense's request to conduct a second evaluation using a separate examiner. Last week, on Tuesday, May 10th, the judge scheduled a May 19th hearing for expert witnesses to argue whether Taylor was competent to stay in trial. Taylor's business is being held on $2 million bond and could face life imprisonment if tried and found guilty of the crimes of which she's been accused. Thanks once again for watching, especially to you guys who are here still watching at the end. What you are seeing now is a preview of my next video. This woman's name is Stephanie Ragusa, and these are Jennifer Fichter, Michelle Preston, and Stacy Schuler. My next video, which is the third episode of a series that I've been doing about teachers caught having sex with their students, tells the wild stories of these women and will be out soon. Be on the lookout for that. And once again, thanks for checking me out, for liking, subscribing, commenting, and for helping me to grow this channel. I appreciate all of you to the fullest. Until the next time, peace.